Welcome everyone to 12th Canadian Science Policy Conference. Uh, I am Sumeda and today we have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Ariela Lukacs. Dr. L uh, Dr. Lukacs is a Vice President Strategy and Positioning Stiletto. Um, she specializes in multi-year strategic planning and execution support for high impact initiatives, market intelligence and business planning. Uh, welcome Dr. Lukacs. Thank you for having me, Sumeda. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm wonderful, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, so let's just begin. Um, so you know, Dr. Lukas, you have a strong research background and now with Stiletto, you're working with uh, um, uh, at the intersection of science, government and industry. So um, what does your current position involve? Uh, sure, yeah. So um, as you mentioned, I am the Vice President of Strategy and Positioning. And uh, Stiletto does um, focus on, it's a market intelligence and strategic planning firm. And we do specialize in uh, high impact initiatives and strategies. And that is for post-secondary uh, in, in institutions, for research and tech park, uh, for government departments, organizations, communities, and, and companies. Um, it's, and it's mostly in Canada and the US. And like you mentioned, many of our uh, projects and initiatives are, are really at the intersection of sectors and of industries. And that's really what you need to, to kind of build critical mass and, and to really have um, everybody at the table. Um, so I would say what, what our secret sauce is and, and what we do is having a really data-centric uh, approach for, for evidence-based recommendations. But then we actually combine that with relationship building. Um, so, you know, to get buy-in and alignment and cooperation. And the overall goal is, is to make meaningful change with, with these strategies and initiatives and really even ongoing operations of these organizations. Congratulations, Dr. Lukas, for Thank such you. a good initiative. <laughs> um, so, um, so this year has been very, very challenging for everyone, for scientific community and for businesses alike, uh, with the closures and everything. Um, how do you think the market has evolved in the last eight months and the impact it had on businesses, communities, um, academic institutions, and actually um, the economic development? What are your views on that? Yeah. And, and that's a great question. It's definitely been interesting. <laughs> um, so what we have seen from, um, from our analysis of reports that came out of surveys that were happening of our own clients is that there's really been a spectrum of how industries and communities and organizations have been affected, right? So uh, on one end of the spectrum, you sort of have the traditional industries, so tourism, accommodation, retail, they've really been hit hard. Uh, so, you know, they, we say that about 30% are probably not even going to recover. Uh, sort of in the middle, you have industries that have been, I would say, disrupted, but then rebounced. So construction and real estate are really good examples of that. Um, and then at the other end, you have sectors that are either emerging or, or adjusting their models. So if you think medical devices, healthcare, advanced manufacturing, agri-food technologies, those are really all thriving. Um, and, and you can actually look at one industry and see the difference. If you think of um, retail, how storefronts and, you know, have been closed and, and not doing so well, but then e-commerce has been booming and even affected industries like supply chain and logistics have been growing together with it, right? We see distribution centers um, opening all the time. So it definitely has been a, a spectrum. Uh, what, uh, what the good news is, and, and we've sort of done this, um, analysis and we have kind of red, orange, green in terms of uh, kind of longer term um, impact and, and rebounds. And it really looks like quite a few industries will uh, rebounce quite quickly. So if you think short term, so right from reopening, full reopening to 12 months, um, you know, agri-food is a good example. Um, and then some are going to take a bit longer. And that's because they really need to adjust their models or uh, rethink how they do it. And the education sector, post-secondary as an example, is a really good example, so, right? It would, it would, so it would take a bit longer, um, probably 12 to 24 months. So what we're seeing is that really everybody needs to think their unique value proposition and really their model and their impact. Thank you, Dr. Lucas, for sharing your uh, views. Um, yeah, uh, we need more optimism and um, like reevaluate 
uh, kind of our models. Um, so you're also a panelist at the conference and uh, you'll be discussing about measuring uh, economic and social impacts of academic institutions, uh, governments, uh, um, innovation ecosystems and companies. Uh, what do you think we have uh, actually learned during these challenging times and uh, what do you think what lies ahead? Uh, that's a wonderful question. I think what we had learned the most is the traditional way of looking at things and doing things is simply not enough. So if you think of measurements and the traditional metrics that governments, funders, that most people are looking at, jobs and GDP growth, um, is not enough. And so we have seen that our growth really has been non-inclusive or sustainable, um, and that caused you know, socioeconomic and environmental imbalances. Um, and we have seen it manifested in, in, during COVID. So COVID has disproportionately affected um, different uh, income levels. It has disproportionately affected genders. Uh, females, women have been impacted harder than men. Uh, we've seen social unrest and of course, uh, social movements. Um, and, and we've seen pollution, right? We've seen that COVID was really good for nature. So, uh, Animals got back to where they weren't before. Um, we had air clearing, um, but even that is not sustainable, right? Because that was because everything came to a, a halt uh, and economies nearly collapsed. And so I think what we have seen is the what we really need is a balance. Um, and so I would say what lies ahead is, is really build back better. And I'm sure you've heard this recently. Um, and, and it's really, it's not a new notion. Um, it was discussed in the UN um, event in 2015. And it really looks at a disaster or a problem as a trigger and a reminder on, we should really think about resilience and we should really rethink how we're doing things. Um, so I think most importantly is to think what you measure is, is what you can control. So if you think of institutions, of initiatives, they really need from, from the design phase of initiatives, of operations, mm -hmm. all the way to ongoing daily operation, how are you being inclusive? How are you being sustainable? Uh, but not at the cost of being visionary. So don't just uh, use these things and, and do the same, but, but really how do you adjust and, and really drive growth um, in an inclusive and, and sustainable way? And so if you think of economic and social impact measurements, um, instead of if you, let's pick on one metric, like number of jobs, don't just think of how many jobs were created. Think, what was the quality? Did it provide good quality of life for the people in those jobs? Uh, did post-secondary uh, education institutions prepare people for those jobs? So our, our education system, does it match the labor market needs and how our industry is growing? And are we creating disparities in doing it? And, and what can we do to um, really adjust that. So, so I would say it, we, we really need to build back better, have the end in mind. How do we want our society, our institutions, our initiatives to look? Um, how do we measure that and then sort of back up and how do we build it from there? Yeah, those are uh, wonderful uh, questions we need to ask ourselves before we uh, go ahead, yeah. Um, so given the reality of the situation as we live in the uh, virtual world now and uh, maybe living in the virtual world for some time, <laughs> um, yes. what, do you, what do you think, like, uh, what, what, what are you most uh, looking forward to the conference? Because this will be an opportunity to uh, reach far more audience than yeah. ever. So uh, what are you most looking forward to it? Uh, wonderful question. So I, I would actually want to start with that. Uh, so I know some people have been struggling a little bit with uh, with the virtual and the video. Um, so Stiletto is a national firm, our, our team is, is across uh, is from coast to coast, and our clients is in, are mostly in Canada and the US. And so I'm actually quite uh, used to and, and I would say well versed in, in virtual. So if anyone wants sort of tips and tricks on how to do it, then feel free to reach out. Uh, so in terms of what I've lo I'm looking forward to, honestly, it's, it's the same as every year. CSPC is a wonderful conference. Um, so of course, the sessions, I, I looked at the agenda and um, all the things that make me happy. So international collaboration, social contracts, equity, diversity and inclusion, uh, scale ups, climate change. So all really exciting topics and really exciting speakers. And of course, I, I look forward to connecting with people. So really talking about science and policy and, and everything in between. And, and like always 
kind of brainstorming how do we make Canada the place to be and the place to learn from in, in driving inclusive and, and sustainable um, and visionary economic, social and environmental um, improvements and growth. Thank you so much, Dr. Lucas. Um, uh, do you want to share any uh, closing remarks or do you want to share any, uh, any projects you're working on? Oh, sure. Um, so, I mean, I hope you can see, I, I love what I do and, and we have very exciting uh, initiatives in the work. So uh, we are working in, in with sectors and industries that really are thriving. So we have an innovation district for environmental technologies uh, in Ontario. We have a, a traceable and sustainable agri-food platform that we work on in Western Canada. Uh, we have several healthcare and digital health initiatives in, in Ontario and in Atlantic Canada. Um, and then we have a few initiatives in, in sustainable transformation of, of traditional industries, which we talked about today is important uh, in the US. Um, so we really have been fortunate uh, in, in our approach and our focus really uh, coming to fruition. And we have tremendous uh, traction with post-secondary post institutions and government communities. So, um, and we're really also uh, trying to focus on industries that have been um, hard hit uh, to some extent. So, for example, creative industries in, in really finding their, their unique value proposition and, and these new innovative models that they can do to grow. So, um, a lot of exciting initiatives. So, if everyone, if anyone is interested, feel free to come talk to me. And I guess I would just say thank you for the opportunity to, to speak today and, and for being a great host. Uh, and I hope everyone enjoys the conference as much as I do every year. Yeah, thank you so much. And we are looking forward to see you at the conference. Thank you so much. And thank you, uh, thank you for sharing your views. Thank you so much. Thank you.